Well, I hope you all enjoyed my top 10 movies of last year, and because it can't all be wine and roses, now we have to get to the bottom 10 movies of 2018. Much like the top 10, this list is purely my own personal opinion, and it probably won't match yours because I'm weird. And like the top 10, I had some difficulty putting this one together because I didn't really see 10 movies in 2018 that I absolutely hated. I did see quite a few bad movies, to be sure, but some of them were kind of enjoyable in spite of, or in some cases, because of what made them bad. So basically, what I've done is I've organized them from most enjoyable to least enjoyable. Make sense? Good. So here they are, my bottom 10 movies for 2018. Number 10, The Cloverfield Paradox. This was certainly a huge surprise, considering the movie's marketing campaign started, what, an hour before the premiere? There we are watching the Super Bowl, and all of a sudden, hey, you want to see a new Cloverfield movie? Come to Netflix after the game. What? I mean, I suppose that's one way to save on marketing costs. And I can understand why they wouldn't want to spend much on marketing costs for this movie, because it was bad. I am not at all surprised that the studio decided to forego the theatrical release and just said, here, Netflix, you... You take it. We, we, we're done with it. This movie has no understanding of how science works, nor does it care. The special effects were about as cheap as you would expect from this movie's budget. And the story was stupid. But it was my kind of stupid. I found it fun and engaging for what it was, and man, this had a far better cast than it deserved. And they were not phoning it in. They gave it 110% all the way. Number 9. The Meg. Some of the special effects in this movie were pretty bad, which is surprising considering this did not have the Cloverfield Paradox's budget. This actually had money behind it. And Jason Statham was horribly miscast, my god. But I can't say I didn't enjoy it. The movie has a completely ridiculous premise, but it knows it's ridiculous and it's just trying to have some fun. And in that regard, it mostly succeeds. Number 8. Bad Samaritan. Boy, howdy, was this movie completely detached from reality and was nowhere near as smart as it thought it was. Abandon all logic, ye who enter here. But I still kind of enjoyed it, mainly because of David Tennant's scenery chewing. He knew exactly what kind of movie he was in, and he was here for it. Any other actor who did not have just that right spark of madness would have face-planted in this role, but Tennant made it work. Number 7. 12 Strong. It was an interesting move to make a pro-Afghanistan war movie in 2018. And by interesting, I mean dumb. And it's not like the movie isn't well made. The combat sequences are excellent and the acting is solid, but... Whoa, how tone deaf can you get? 15 years ago, this movie might have played well, but in 2018... No. Dear God, no. Number 6. Tomb Raider. This was one of the better video game adaptations I've seen, but that's not saying much. They made quite a few changes to the source material, which would have been fine if the changes were in any way interesting, but they weren't. It did get exciting when they finally got to the actual tomb raiding, but it just took so goddamn long to get there. And it was not worth the wait, let me tell you. Number 5. Mowgli, Legend of the Jungle. Did you enjoy Disney's Jungle Book movie from a couple of years ago? Well, here's the grimdark version of that. And it is fantastically average. I have no complaints about the acting. Honestly, I thought the kid who played Mowgli in this movie was better than the Disney version. But the animation was hit and miss, and the story just wasn't all that interesting. And boy, did it get unnecessarily dark at times. It never really justified its own existence, considering it had to compete with the far superior Disney version. But even if that movie never happened, this one was just... meh. Number 4. White Boy Rick. The life of Rick Wershey Jr. is quite interesting. The movie based on his life is not. Boy, did this movie have a tendency to drag. It did have some good performances from Matthew McConaughey and Belle Pally, but Rick is the least interesting part of his own story. He's just a very bland character, and Richie Merritt gave a bland performance to go with it. Number 3. Ready Player One. It's kind of like Wreck-It Ralph in that I got to play a game of Spot the Reference. It's unlike Wreck-It Ralph in that playing Spot the Reference was the only fun I had. 
The characters were not interesting at all. The very concept of taking down the Big Bad Evil Corporation by playing video games was comical. The obsession with pop culture was not nearly as charming as the movie thought it was. And overall, it was just dull. Even Mark Rylance could not save this movie. Number 2. Winchester. I have actually been to the real Winchester house, it's pretty much in my backyard, and it is a fascinating piece of architecture built by a fascinating woman. So a movie about this lady and her weird house should have been decent if only by accident. But clearly the filmmakers were determined to make this suck, and by god they succeeded. All we got from Winchester was another jump scare fest that gave not one fuck for historical accuracy, and an anti-gun message that was not very well thought out. Even Helen Mirren could not save this movie. Well, there's only one more movie left, and you probably have a pretty good idea what it is. But first, some dishonorable mentions. Rampage. This was about as good as an adaptation of a 1980s arcade game was ever going to get. It was incredibly stupid, and the villain's plan made no sense at all, but it's hard not to enjoy The Rock fighting some huge-ass monsters. It's hard not to enjoy The Rock in anything. Speaking of which, Skyscraper. Basically, this was the poor man's Die Hard, and the world's most expensive duct tape commercial. But the action sequences and the death-defying escapes were quite enjoyable, as was The Rock as usual. And remember, if you can't fix it with duct tape, you're not using enough duct tape. Venom. Boy, did this movie get off to a rocky start, and I thought I was gonna be in for one hell of a slog. But once that very silly symbiote showed up, I genuinely started to enjoy myself. It's not a good movie by any means, but it was much better than I expected. Although I think they would have been better served by going for an R rating. Well, can't put this off any longer. Let's wrap it up. My number one worst movie of 2018 is... 50 Shades Freed. I know this is a predictable choice, but it's predictable for a reason. These movies suck. I will give it this much. It is the best Fifty Shades movie to date. Low bar, I know, but unlike the previous two movies, this one actually has a plot. I know, what a novel idea. Unfortunately, it's a stupid-ass plot that somehow involves a book publisher being able to hack security systems, sabotage helicopters, and basically do whatever the hell else the plot calls for, even if it's completely implausible. Especially if it's completely implausible. And it has a twist you will never see coming. Mainly because there was never any real build-up to it. Why, if I didn't know any better, I would swear E.L. James came up with this idea at the last minute and just shoehorned it into the book, but what are the odds of that? It's ridiculous, it's dull, it's nowhere near as sexy as it thinks it is, and I'm just glad this trilogy is finally over. Well, those are my bottom 10 movies of 2018 and I'm sure I'll be back doing this again in a year's time. Although, will I really have as much to talk about? I don't know. I mean, in 2019, we're getting more Avengers, more John Wick, more Star Wars. Shazam actually looks pretty good. Detective Pikachu, of all things, has a lot of potential. I don't know. I think 2019 is actually shaping up to be pretty damn- Oh, hell no!